Hello people and welcome aboard to watch yet another VTCOC friendly match, this time between Ukraine and Spain. Um, both of those teams uh, well both of those teams have been very active in the friendly match department. And uh, today they are going to face themselves. Um, the lineups today will be Stare Pravo versus Madcan, uh, Basilic versus Loku Ilo, Devaka versus Rakarot, Fanalexen versus Oscar Ridis, and Smile versus the captain of um, the captain, as far as I know, um, of the Spanish team, uh, the POC or jo or uh, Joaquin Calzado. Now, as we can see, we have quite a few familiar names, and uh, as per the thing is, uh, you, the viewers, get to decide who we are going to watch. Um, unless there are going to be no suggestions, then we are going to go, uh, or then I'm going to take full authority and I'm going to pick a match that I like. Also, hello, Glovir. Nice to see you up and early in the chat. And uh, <clears throat> uh, reminds me that again, um, since yesterday's stream, where uh, uh, where Afonso or um, or um, 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 very conveniently reminded me reminded me to register Finland's team. I forgot. Okay, so uh, so Finland is still not registered. I, I really gotta take care of that. Okay, uh, to the back of my head, some reminders. We do not want to miss the registration, which uh, which ends on. A the 10th of April, so there is still one week to um, to go until the registration ends. So make sure that all of your teams are indeed registered if you have or if you know all the players who are going to take part in it. Okay, Glovia saying, I have no prefer preferences today, let's go with your choice. That is fantastic. If anyone likes to uh, content that uh, statement, then uh, uh, be my guest. Otherwise, we are gonna go, uh, let's say, um, let's say, um, how about Basilic and Loku Elo. So we're gonna start with those as they have started um, or will be starting in just a couple of minutes. Um, also, I am going to announce like well somewhat well, not even early, but uh, I'm going to say that tomorrow, um, I have been able to organize a match um, uh, between Finland and Latvia, and I will be streaming that. And I also will be having the first ever guest on the channel. So uh, we can only hope that. Uh, the uh, all, all things go well uh, since I have not had, as I said, a a guest before on the on the channel. So uh, uh, it has been a rather busy day for me trying to set up the setup um, for tomorrow. So if you are planning to watch. Or yeah, if you are planning to join the stream tomorrow, then uh, be like slight, you know, like slightly prepared for like minor um, interruptions or issues. Um, this is gonna be a learning curve for me. 
Uh, but now we go into the games of today. Which um, Loku is the starting player and has been able to use that advantage to take to take the first four points. Uh, Basilic starts a field um, counter to what I myself like to do. I either like to take the more vacant city cap or to just even uh, go here with the divider and not to start a a field at the very early stage of the game but uh, both both options are completely doable also now it is immediately a nine point field and uh, it's already actually like worth fighting for uh, Loku was able to snatch the other city of those two, so Loku is in the lead, assisted with the four-point road, no, so now he has an eight-point lead, whereas Basilic has the field under control and is controlling two, um, two roads, one that needs a crossroad or another kind of road end, and another that needs a... a um, curve. So good stuff for Basilic. Can use multiple different road tiles effectively. Also has a two point city which is now under attack by Loku. Hmm, interesting, okay. Uh, this is a very interesting move by Basilic. Um, does not take four points and instead decides to finish his road and not even take this city, which I gotta say is a mistake. I would have definitely liked to see um, Loku going for the like robbery of this city like immediately placing a meeple here and then getting a triple city like he actually did place it here and then be just uh, one uh, one triangle shot of finishing that uh, 12 or 14 point city now instead he gets the try he gets the triple city but uh, he has to use it to actually take the city Which is a bit a bit less ideal because now there is a opportunity for a Loku to grab a triangle or a triple city, go over here, limit this square to a quad city, and uh, very uh, confidently be up in a winning mini battle very soon. However, however, that does not happen as Loku gets that. Uh, well, the correct tile, but uh, one turn too short, and Basilic is able to finish a 16-point city. So this um, this um, city still ended up working just fine for Basilic. Also, now controls another nine-point field, and. Uh, is looking, you know, quite fine at, at the moment in this match. Loku has been able to finish the monastery, but now has some uh, issues with his uh, road, which is honestly does not look so pleasant. A uh, only a three points, and uh, he has to restrict that city to a uh, to a crossroad because all of the three daggers were already out so it could have been the case that uh, this city plus road could have been blocked um, in just one move which is why indeed Loku needed to limit himself to just two tiles 
because two city crossroads are, are in the deck. And also drops of, drops of farmer, which I'm not sure if I like that. I think there are definitely like better spots to attack the field from, like from here, example. I think a bit premature. Because now Loku is uh, gonna be waiting for this tile, which is gonna be very precious for him. And furthermore, now Basilic is going to be waiting for a road monastery, which if he gets it, I, I mean, he might just win the game immediately, maybe, uh, because he will be controlling all of the fields with three meeples, uh, where, um, when uh, Loku would only be having maybe one, maybe two, but this is an if farmer and this one well he does connect it so if the road monastery hits it's gonna be big wins for uh, for basilic nine points finishes his road brings these people to the farm all kinds of good stuff um, also all uh, starting tiles are now out Basilk gets the first city crossroads, so now only one tile to go here. Um, lo looking not so good for Loku. Basilk 21 points ahead and with, I want to say, significantly more threats as he has an 8 point city waiting to be finished. And this road monastery is only going to be benefiting green, I'd say. And there is also, um, well, actually, there is not really much else, but he has a um, green has a huge field which has a lot of green squares also to build. So even if he would not not be able to get the road, the road monastery, he would be just in a splendid position. Loku now has to resort into using valuable city caps to try and uh, complete a shared feature just to get a meeple back. Hmm. Interesting decision by Maxim here. Adding one point to Locus Road. Hmm. Maybe trying to guide it like to this corner. Decides that that is not his plan. Green has all the threats. Yes, indeed he does. And it, honestly, it's not looking too great for Loku. Does get the final remaining city crossroad, but uh, that means that this meeple is now stuck because there are no city crossroads and um, no starting tiles. Also, Green just gets the road monastery and he is um, also in lead in meeples. So uh, uh, if you're Loku, I, I have no idea how you can come back. Uh, there might not there might not even be a way. Like this city is very unlikely to be finished. I don't think he's gonna get this uh, this road meeple back. Although there is ah uh, no there isn't no there isn't no there isn't. There, I thought there was one triple city with a road left, but there is not. So, cannot get this back, cannot get this back, and somehow has to deal with the field uh, when he can only come into a 3-3 three and three situation. If he can even find a connection spot, like maybe here, 
or here actually is, is a rather good connection spot, but uh, it doesn't really matter because I mean, look at the scoreboard. Maxim is 40 points ahead. These are equal 3, 4, 8, 12, 16, 19, 11. Um, two. So Basilic just plus 42 or something <laughs> with six tiles remaining. I mean, uh, it's it's quite uh, quite a decimation on this first game. Loku trying to get to the field, but it's it possible anymore. Uh, Basilic takes out at least one tile that can get Loku to the field. One, two, three, four, five, two. There are. Oh, actually, is there a vanilla city cap? There might be. There might indeed be. But if there is, it doesn't go to local anyways. Uh, but there was. Also, I'm not sure why uh, why local plays this tile here. Not that it really like meant any anything in terms of the final outcome, but like I mean, look at look at this. This is gonna be a fucking slaughter. Plus. Green has the fields, and he is already 32 points ahead. Jesus Christ! How f 60 minus 68 for black? Holy! That is one of the most uh, most uneven matches I have ever seen. <laughs> 58 to 126. That is insane. Wow. Hello, Alfonso. Welcome to follow the decimations today. The decimation game. Okay. Um, how about we refrain from watching that pair anymore i think we we saw just enough <laughs> um how about if we go for um, stare bravo and mad can let's see how they are doing um they are having their first game at the moment Twelve tiles remaining. Okay, let's do some quick analysis. Four points for green. Um, five. Eight and eight on the monasteries. Uh, minus two, minus six. Ten, fifteen. 10, 5, 2, minus 10, uh, minus 7, minus 7 for, for green, I think. Uh, does manage to snatch the final remaining triple city with a road that red would have liked in here and which probably would have sealed the game for red. Are, are there regular... Oh, 
Oh yeah, yeah. Are there regular curves? If there are, then I think green has a chance. Four, five, six, seven. There's two regular curves, okay, which both will give green um, the mm -hmm. upper hand on this field altogether. So a 75% chance that green gets a majority on a 12 point uh, on a 12 point field uh, which would be would be absolutely absolutely huge I have to agree, Clovia. I, um, I think we kind of have to have to try and cheer local to achieve a massive comeback win from that horrible, horrible start. I think Star might actually, if Red evens this field, is it going to be enough? It might not be. Um, there are also no triple cities with a field to go here, so that's good to know. Ah, okay. Okay, so Red decides that uh, they are going to go, tr uh, they are going to try and get, get a straight road, but because Red only has three tiles remaining, he has to pull. Uh, oh, yeah, he has to draw like both, um, both curves and then the straight road. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is one straight road, uh, and that's it. So I think in order for Red to win. He has to draw both curves and the straight road. Red doesn't draw any of those, so which which means that um, Green is forced to take at least one of those, which I think will be enough for Green to win, actually. With this six-point uh, castle as well. So now, oh, actually, yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course, it's it might be. Uh... No, but is it enough? If if red just draws the second um, curve as well, maybe it's enough. Or is there a tile here? Wait a minute. That might be a masterful plan. I... Oh, there's the fifth, okay. Are there... Daggers? One... Two... Oh, wait. Oh, that's a wonderful plan by, by Red. Let's make sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, that's a wonderful plan by Red, because he is now he now is forced to either draw the final remaining regular curve or the final remaining dagger, which will both get him where he needs to be. If they draw the curve, they are just gonna prevent. Uh, green from connecting, and if they draw the dagger, they are gonna connect through uh, here to Green's field. And if Green then um, gets the regular curve, it's not gonna be it, it's not gonna end up in a majority. So a spectacular find by Stare Bravo. But now that that he got the uh, curve, is it going to be enough that uh, if Star it just maintains the control of the 12-point field? Uh, I am not entirely sure. 
but it is 12 points so it is it is plus nine in terms of field points which which is a considerable amount and 15 points for the monasteries ah uh, it's yeah it's definitely gonna be enough unfortunately madcan was not able to draw either of the two remaining curves which he needed to win just tying the field would have been a uh, yeah just tying the field would have been enough Okay, so Star Bravo goes into a 1-0 lead versus the Spaniard. Then Star Bravo uh, 1-0 Madcan, Basilic 1-0 Loku, and well, let's just take the next one in order. So Devaka, and let's see, Rakarot has taken a game point for Spain, so Devaka 01 Rakarot. Let's have a look-see into the second game of theirs. So, um, Rakarot being able to take the advantage uh, has been the first player. Uh, yeah, the first four point advantage going to Rakarot, and then also seemingly being just getting only city caps. First this, then this, me pulling another city, then just continuing and completing a city. Just very splendid tiles for Rakarot at the start. And now I actually imagine he's gonna just take the field here. Oh, I definitely would have liked him to take the field because look at look at this field. Like it would have been just a splendid field to have a six pointer plus potentially a nine and extremely difficult to attack to, or actually impossible to be attacked to uh, from anywhere else but here. Man, I would have been so tempted, and I, and I would have absolutely taken that field. But instead, Rakarot decides to just continue his city by one point and make it more vulnerable to attacks, which Devaka took full advantage of immediately. And so now, with this triple city also, you know, I think Rakarot might be... Uh, might be having second thoughts about ab about using this uh, triangle to extend his city and i don't think he's gonna feel too happy for it third starting tile out the game and i can just feel rakarot going oh shit this is serious What's he gonna do? I mean, with, with five meeples, I mean, he could, you know, take a ruin, in all honesty, and try to get a six point move done over here, take the three point road, and extend the ruin. But instead, goes for a attacking move on the Vaka city. Mm, yeah, I... do I like this defense? I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, I, I, I guess, I guess I do, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think my, my, the, my uh, top move would have been over here, just pre-finish the city 
and start a new one and then have four tiles no sorry five tiles over here to finish it uh, with this move it's of course more difficult to attack to or actually not not possible to attack to um, with only one move but it does restrict the square from um, from like five ideal tiles to just two which is quite a lot and this will also extend Rakarot's field upwards to include this city Meanwhile, Dewaka protecting his um, his road with a shielded tile. Do I like it? Uh, no, not really, because all three um, city crossroads are, of course, left, which is like good odds that Dewaka will get the meeple out, but by using shielded tiles like this and not meepling them um, he's gonna make a threat to himself uh, that Rakarot just grabs a city cap goes over here, meeples an 8 point city and then um, is gonna get a 2 point road in addition to completing that city later on in the game However, Rikarot does not get it. Instead, he uses a triple city to attack the Vakas city at the at the top left, and he's gonna equalize it, uh, which also did make um, the Vakas dagger somewhat useless, or not exactly useless. I mean. He was able to block Rakarot's city to one tile, but he wasn't able to make use out of the city cap. Or, well, he could have, but it would have been uh, at least a bit uncomfortable, if not dangerous. Okay, Devaka's monastery getting restricted immediately to two tiles. Now Devaka goes for this move. Um, yet there is an 87.5 chance to get at least one of the three remaining city crossroads. So in all likelihood, exactly one out of eight games. Um, according to the odds, uh, these features are gonna get finished at some point. Um, there might be a bit of a weight on those tiles, but I think it is well worth the small risk getting an eight point city in addition to a three point road and then getting the um, road meeple back. Rakarot gets the triple city with a road, so this monastery is now stuck. Um, but it's not gonna go in vain, because there is a possibility that uh, Devaka is able to restrict this square to a starting tile, and then Rakarot would be needing the, that same starting tile, which are which there are only one left in the deck, to both here and here. And that would be a huge win for uh, for Devaka. Does exactly that, and I think that is a very well spent uh, city cap. Does give a a opportunity for. 
give uh, four Rackhard, excuse me, to take four points and extend the road, but also give one point to Devaka's monastery. And since this road is uh, not guaranteed to be uh, to be finished after getting a starting tile, it's not going to be worth using the starting tile here. Instead, Rackhard will, at least in my head, a hundred times out of a hundred use it here. And if it's at the end of the game, then just even take a four point road. What's up, Peachen? Good to see you. Okay, Green not able to score quick points, so instead decides to take a loop road under his control. Unfortunately for him, he did create an extra city cap for Devaka to take points from, and that is exactly what Devaka is able to do. Uh, Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, I was thinking that uh, maybe um, maybe Rakarot should have uh, guided this uh, triangle to the other direction to to be able to build over here and not have to connect to Red's part of the city. But then I realized that there is one extra square to build stuff too for green and if Devaka wants to share those points that gets that that get built up here if at all then he's gonna uh, just have to connect himself to green's ruin meanwhile red is able to get the f the city crossroad that he was after Finishes the eight-point city, three-point road. Uh, uh, in addition to that, and also finishes the four-point loop road. Also gets two meebles back into his disposal. Gets another monastery. Gets a ruin or a city. Let's call that a city at the moment. So it's, it is possible to be completed, and there is actually quite a fine threat that it will get completed and Rakarot will have to deal with that. Devaka probably gonna go just for one for just for one uh, just for one the monastery point. Uh, I don't see him starting any roads. I don't actually see any kind of use for a curve other than one monastery point. I don't think it's worth to start harassing this one point city. Just another monastery point. An extender for Rakarot uh, is very welcomed for him. I think Green is um, losing at the moment. Actually, might be losing by quite a lot even. Um, minus one meeple and minus one point. Minus two points. Even uh, plus four, plus six, plus nine, plus eleven plus 4, minus 2, minus 6, 7, minus 10 points, and a meeple. Definitely needs to complete this, and also this would be quite a dream tile for Rakarot to get a 7 point move, potentially 11 point move if he takes the road. 3, 4, 5, 6, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, still 6, or now 5 city caps remaining to go over here. And looks like there was indeed a massive threat that Devaka was actually going to complete this city. However, Rakarot was successfully able to, um, to negate that threat by blocking the city. But he is increasingly more behind all the time in points. Now um, uh, 11 or 12, I think. And with minus one maple and Devaka just uh, keeps drawing the city caps. Which is definitely not something that uh, Rakarot wants to see. It's gonna be very troublesome for him to try and find his way out of this mess without completing his cities. Especially when there are not that many quick point tiles remaining, there's gonna be one crossroad. And a road monastery, which can be used to take three points, but not much else. Um, you know, of course, if you don't count the uh, city caps, and we don't count them in this instance because we are counting the tiles uh, which Rakarot can make immediate points with, with his one meeple that he can use to that tile and if it's the if, if it is the city cap that he uses the meeple on it's gonna be like three points not worth doing at this moment so he's gonna use city caps just to complete a an eight point city or the six point city oh and devaka pulls another City cap, and it is also the final remaining starting tiles, so this will never be finished. Adds one point. And Rakarot might just have to go, like, just send it, take a five point monastery, and then hope that he gets a city cap to finish his eight point city. Instead he just tries to keep blocking. Uh, but I, I don't think this is it. I think Rakarot just needs to like he, he needs help from uh, King Dios God uh, that uh, that he draws the city caps. Devaka now with a triangle with a road. Not much to do with it. Well, I mean, I guess he could just take a six point road because there are this uh, one crossroad and the road monastery remaining. So there is a shot that he gets the road completed. Surely he's not gonna take... Wow! No, 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 no. I... I have to disagree. I, I, I gotta disagree with, with Devaka here. Like, I don't think... Uh, like even if Rakarot gets the city cap, I don't think Rakarot would be taking this city. And I'm very surprised that uh, Rakarot took this city. Like this might have even been the final city cap. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten, eleven, twelve. 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So yeah, there was only one city cap remaining and it was this. And uh, you know, first of all, you only have a 50-50 shot at getting the city cap and finish the city, which you now can't do. And uh, second of all, Devaka, uh, like there, there already was a spot for that city cap to take four points with. And like Rakarot needed to leave this city cap empty because it cannot be completed and now he is gonna be wasting his meeple to to this one point city whereas it could now be worth at least seven points over here by taking the monastery and to have a meeple in hand still I think a massive Massive oversight by by Rakarot. Might not have even counted the remaining city caps. I think he might have just gone a bit blind here and uh, just do like natural moves, but you know, too late in the game when natural moves are not what you can afford to do. Oh, takes a six point field instead of a seven point monastery. Ah, yeah, of course, because he's trying to get the, um, the road monastery and try to extend his field by, by six points. That is definitely an option, but, uh, you know, still it can be uh, like there's gonna be, like, e even if he gets the Road Monastery, there's gonna be a spot to attack this, uh, to attack the field too. Uh, no! Devaka definitely, definitely needed to take the field. Ah! I don't think, I don't think it's going to matter in terms of the final outcome. But definitely, Devaka needed to place this this uh, road meeple to the field, because even though this road is now seven points, where whereas it would be six points if we if you take the field, in the case that you are not gonna be drawing the road monastery like you didn't, then you don't allow uh, Rakara to take five more points to the field. So that's a big mistake by Devaka, which definitely is something that uh, he needs to f fix in the future um, on the higher level, on the higher, on the higher level um, games. And if he plays in in VTCOC, um, I'm not sure if he if he does. But if he does, um, then definitely something that uh, he can improve on. Just take your time, especially in the low in in slow time format, and check what tile is remaining. Because also, like even in the case that uh, that Devaka gets that um, uh, road monastery like he can't place it at either end of his road because it's going to do the same thing for Rakarot it's gonna extend the field so I'm I I, I do not know what uh, Devaka was thinking when he went like downwards with the road like now he wasn't even able to get the one extra point to his road and like it's not like he can go with the road monastery here like it's sure it, co it completes the monastery and adds one point to your road but again it extends Rakarot's field by six points okay uh, uh, but a game point for Devaka
and it is now one and one. Now, um, let's see. Let's see how Joaquin is doing. Aha. Okay. Very fast paced games. Smile taking a two to one win versus Joaquin and takes the first uh, first match point for Ukraine. Okay, how about then Fan Alexon? A one one situation, so it is a decider indeed. Let's take a look. Nine tiles remaining. Okay, quick analysis. Uh, one point lead for red. Uh, four, seven. Nice move by Oscar Ridis. Uh, four, five, uh, nine, two, uh, even, minus six, minus three. And this field is so far even, but okay, so minus three for red. Uh, but there is this field that that red might be able to overrun. Like could do it with this tile, but it's not worth because he's gonna give a meeple back to Oscar Redis and with uh, and by being just three just uh, three points behind, um, red can definitely get that three points with with his one meeple advantage. Are there any spots where Oscaridis can score? Can this be finished? One, two, three, four. No, it cannot. One, two. Yeah, it cannot. So this is blocked. Is there a field crossroad? One, two, three. No, there is not. Is there a regular crossroad? Ah, not like city crossroad. Quad crossroad. All gone. Okay, so this is not gonna show into a six point field. Uh, Can Oscar Ridis get his meeple back? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, two curves. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like there are going to be plenty of straight roads, uh, which means that there is a huge possibility, almost a hundred percent possibility, I think. Oh no, never mind. Uh, well, I think a big possibility that um, red gets to this nine-point field from here. And a theoretic possibility was that uh, Oscar Ridis was going to be able to take his meeple back, but now that chance is gone because he did, for some reason, he did something here. Uh, I guess tried to prevent the chance of uh, of Red completing the city, but this move didn't actually do anything because there were no tiles with. Road plus city, so this move restrict, restricted absolutely nothing. Red 
red is able to get to the 9 point field and overrun it also gets another 9 point field and that's gonna be easily enough for uh, for the Ukrainian player to take another match point for his team by I wanna say maybe 15 points Never mind, my point calculation was uh, terrible. Um, and it was terrible because I did not see that blue had three meeples on this field and not two. So, which means that red did not overrun this field but just uh, got to even. Yeah, I just uh, equalized it. Okay, uh, match point to Ukraine again. Da -da 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 -da. To another two and one. Which tells me that the, that the Spanish players are not giving the points out too easily. Wait, what? Yeah, okay. And then... Um, stare bravo. Um, yep. Having the decider, so twenty five tiles remaining. Good. We shall watch the end of this. Okay, um, a huge point lead for green twenty one, but doesn't seem to have too good of a stance with the. Uh, with the features on the board, blocked five point row, four point road, so plus twenty five uh, for twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, um, twenty five, twenty four, twenty five. Okay. Mm, plus 10 for green still, and... Is it really? Yeah, pl plus 10 for green, and in a meeple advantage. Okay, plus 7, and in a meeple advantage. Now, in a marvelous situation, gets a fantastic tile. 4 points, and connects to Red's 10 point road, which Stade Bravo might even have to attack again. There is still one city crossroad that goes here, and I think Stade Bravo will actually go for this connection, because I don't think the features otherwise on the board are too kind for Red. One, two, three, four, five, six, two crossroads, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, two crossroads, five curves. So the odds are definitely in Red's favor that uh, unless something is done to this road, uh, he is going to connect. But uh, the thing is that green has two meeples more and there are one dagger, the city crossroad, one, two, and there is a starting tile over here as well. So red is definitely, I think, going to need to complete that city. And also to connect to this road and maybe even complete it to have a shot in this game. Which is 
honestly quite a lot if you ask me. So what's he gonna conjure up? Might just take a one point. But then Green is gonna get his hands on a potential nine point farm. Which which he might like already do. Although a I think a more tempting farm is here because the because there is the final remaining city crossroad remaining and red yeah like yeah unfortunately if you are red i you might not you, you might um you, you you might not have the luxury to to turn the city cap like this, you might need to uh, to turn it to here so that you have more use for uh, city caps with a field. And now you have a huge dilemma. Go here and take this city, uh, complete the city, take the meeple back. Um, go here, take five points and pre and all complete your monastery except for one tile or connect to the road which is now under severe threat of getting restricted to a to a crossroad and in red situation you might you know honestly have to go here and just bank your game on the fact that you are possibly able to get another curve i i don't i wouldn't like to do this move but like a meeple back you're gonna need that meeple desperately because you need to be able to fight for this field and like you're so far behind that you just have to take huge risks. Does do it, which might end up paying off. Madcan is not able to um, to restrict the road to a crossroad, but other tiles that can connect Star Bravo to the road if. Matt can goes here. I think the answer is yes. There is still two road triangles left. Adds one point and Star Bravo gets it. The risk pays off. But I think ah uh, an oversight by by Red. I think he had, he ne needed to meeple this uh, this field. I think he needed to meeple this field because there's going to be a third city coming maybe quite soon and now I think Green is going to take the field. I don't think Red has the luxury to take to try take this uh, field by tempo exactly because now Green takes it mm, and it's going to be 9 maybe even 12 points it's going to be a big field. But this was definitely something that uh, does help Red's winning chances by a huge margin. Getting a 10 point city completed, getting a meeple back and then connecting to this massive road of um, now 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 points. And it cannot be attacked anymore. Uh, I think there's definitely going to be straight road remaining. Uh, one, two, three, four, still four straight roads remaining. So splendid chances to uh, to get a tile over here. Maybe even me pull uh, the city, uh, not the city, but the field on, on this side. And then get the city crossroad and actually finish the... Uh, 
the road, get two meeples back and only give green one meeple back and then maybe even get this monastery meeple back, maybe fight for the field, I mean, now after this uh, couple last moves, red is actually back in the game. Green restricts the road to a crossroad. Now red needing both of the remaining crossroads in order to see these meeples back. But um, I don't think it's a an absolute necessity possibly to uh, to finish that road. Uh, it's because it's still going to be you know, 14 points uh, for one extra meeple. It's a splendid amount of points for an extra meeple. Um, if he manages to get this, then maybe a the final remaining... Actually, there are no triangles with road remaining anymore. I think this might be the second to last tile to fit here. Um, unless there is a triple city with a road. Which there are actually. Um, there is one triple city with the road, which. Uh, but. Oh, okay. So red is not going to even go for this. Which. Uh, which I can actually totally understand. I mean, uh, directly five points instead of three, and this one would leave a, a potential four-point loop road for green. The question is, is red uh, in a position where he can risk not finishing this road? And he would have been able to finish it. Ah, that, that has to bite red at least somewhat. But uh, I think this is still a a good option, straight up five points. And like I said, um, now a 15 point road for one extra meeple is is a good use of a meeple. Is also able to get this monastery meeple back. And now, is he able to fight for this field? Does he need to fight for the field? Because he, he can just take a six point field anyways. Plus one on the scoreboard, plus ten. Um, these fields actually cancel each other out. Okay, so plus one, um, plus five, plus zero, six, minus twelve, and this road, I think, is red plus three? I think red is plus three. I think red has completely turned this game upside down as a result of these two moves red absolutely has to take this field six points and you are already ahead in points takes the field correct move green what does he do Four points, I guess. And try to maybe harass this city to not be completed if it's possible anymore. Uh, but like plus three now, plus nine, plus eight. Uh, is there a chance for green to win this? Can he complete the monastery? Uh, one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Unfortunately, there is no tile here, like after this road monastery, so it is not possible to complete it. Um, I think green just has to settle with the four points. Yeah, there might not 
be a win for Green anymore. Again, as a result of the two very precise moves that Red managed to make by using a calculated risk to his advantage. Hello, even. Takes the four points. And what does Red get? A straight road. Not too much to be done with it. Uh, maybe he could even attack the field. Uh, I think there is one. No, there isn't. Uh, one regular monastery but they are all gone so let's try to quickly see what tiles are remaining one two three four five six seven eight um one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all crossroads gone all monasteries gone uh no regular curves extenders one to an extender and something. Uh, well, that exen extender is going to be useful for Madcan uh, for two, actually for three points because it is with a shield. Um, and green is now at minus four, I think. So if green gets the extender at three points um, and then is able to score, but actually uh, a tie isn't going to be good enough for green because green is the starting player. So green must get the extender and then somehow score on his last move two points points more than blue uh, than red which might be very yeah might might be too much to ask given the board when there are like no features that can yield more than th three or four points Oh, there is a road. There is a five point road. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Oh, but the curves are gone. Ah, uh, so straight roads, right? Three, four, five, six. Yeah, two straight roads. Uh, yeah, of course, seven. So extender a straight road and who knows, probably a city cap because that's like the only thing I didn't count. Hello Joaquin, um, hopefully this is going to be able to help um, in your player training if you do such things uh, with the help of the streams. Matt can uh, just add three points. Ah, but you know, given this move, I think the final remaining tile then must be like the vanilla city cap. Uh, two, three, four, yeah. Vanilla City Cap, and it goes to Madcan because Tare Bravo now was able to just take three points uh, plus seven plus four. Tare Bravo will remain at plus four. Madcan is going to be able to take four, but I th I think this is going to be a tie. And I think Madcan is going to lose because he was the starting player. 
I think that's what's gonna going to happen. We will see that very shortly. Four points. Is that four points going to be enough to bring uh, to bring Madcan into a win? Sixty-six, a fifteen-point road. Four for the city, plus six, plus thirteen. Wait. Ah, okay. Well, that suits very well for Mad Cant, and apparently every time I try to count points, I am horribly wrong. And well, that's gonna be enough for Mad Cant, and which is why Star Bravo went for this move because he needed to make the nine-point move with two moves. And let's quickly check, like, if this would have happened, plus 6 for Star Bravo to 88, and then Matt can would be able to take, like, th 3 points, so 85, so, yeah, it was a, indeed a 50-50 shot at a win. But the, Mad, uh, but the Spaniard gets the better of it. And with that, it is going to be another 2-1 to one match. Although I'm going to quickly make sure that it actually was a 2-1. to one. Um, Yes, it was. 2-1 to one match. And let's mark down the point for the Spain, which is not going to be leaving this match empty-handed. Then the others, which I think have already finished their games. Basilic winning 2-0 versus Loku. Also the second one with over a 30 point difference. Just look at this slaughter that uh, Maxim was able to put down today. Just a demoralizing <laughs> um, performance um, when it comes when it comes to Loku. I hope he's going to be able to recover um, from that uh, from that major downfall that he had today. Certainly not a very enjoyable experience necessarily for Loku. But uh, that's going to be a third match point for Ukraine, and with that they are going to win. Uh, let's see how Devaka and Rakarot were able to finish their duel. Uh, Devaka also taking a point to uh, to Ukraine. So Ukraine definitely be putting quite the performance for everyone to see on the on the last couple of days. Four to one, a very convincing performance today, and uh, congratulations to the players that um, that played today for Ukraine, ending up in a with a nice score i think also with a let's say two uh, four two five four nine and five in games that was quite something and commissioners for team spain can't deny they have been definitely um, been up quite 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Spain has definitely been setting up quite the number of friendly matches. I think uh, uh, seeing that there are still already uh, two more to come, uh, they might be the most active uh, friendly match team. I think um, as, as far as I know, um, as of right now, um, although I I don't want to I don't want to jinx it, but um, I don't think that uh, on the final seven days anyone is going to top the amount of matches that Spain has scheduled and played. So definitely respect for Spain for setting up as many friendly matches and having um, all the time in their in the hands of their players to actually make that thing happen. Not a given thing for sure from from uh, any team and from uh, any captain. As active as the captain, yes, that is true. Seems to seems that uh, Spain has made an excellent choice regarding their uh, captain selection, or whether or if you are self-proclaimed, then um, uh, well, even even better actually, since uh, you have uh, you have reigned superior and uh, shown that you are able and willing to actually put in the time and effort to lead Spain into a glorious path this season. Um, okay, uh, as a reminder, um, tomorrow gonna be streaming Finland versus Latvia. It is not um, it is not up on the on the page, but uh, whoever is watching this stream um, now has a heads up on that. It is going to take place at uh, uh, eighteen. Uh, yeah, 1800 UTC. Uh, so just an hour before today's starting time. Oh, wait. Yes, 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 yes. So 1800 UTC, Finland, Latvia, gonna be with a guest. Thank you all for coming here today and I will see you again with more Cargason content. Bye for now.